All right, let's open six more packs of Throneable Drain, Japanese print. Uh, yeah, delicious, delicious cardboard. Very good. I'm so lucky. I, yeah, I was looking under on the on the back of the box, and I now I know it does say printed in Japan. So yeah, uh, this is part of a playlist, a new playlist for a, a monocolored cube that I'm gonna do centered around uh, Throne of All Drain and Theros Two. I don't think I need to buy any more Theros Two packs. I may do that. Um, but definitely with two boxes of Eldraine, and I'm going to crack most of them, if not everything. Um, that should give me enough to make a very nice cube. And I can get singles too. Oh, this is my first uh, Fabled Passage that I've ever pulled, actually. Even though I cracked uh, more than a box of Eldraine before this, I never did crack a Fabled Passage. So that's the first one. Yeah. So the uh, current D&D set is very good, the one that just came out. I like it a lot. I've been playing it in Arena. Yeah, it's nice. Very nice. I was watching a video by MTG Lion, and he said, hey, this the D&D set is really nice. Uh, and uh, he had enjoyed He plays a lot of Arena, just as I do. And I was like, oh, you know, I mean, I trust him. He's He's been playing for a long time. And so I was like, well, maybe there's something there. And sure enough, I started looking through the cards. The dungeon mechanic works really well. It's very interesting. But like all of these sets, which again, this is the reason why I'm completely changing my strategy uh, to do maybe to do really like two boxes per set at the same time instead of doing a bunch of packs from different sets like I used to do uh, is because all these sets are all in to their specific strategy and so if you're gonna build a cube the seed for any one of the cubes uh, is two boxes of that set and then a few things from the others but really really you're doing two boxes of a set and so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna go I think I'm gonna go five fat packs at a time but when I hit the two color decks that I want to build then I think I'll do two sets two sets at the same time ten fat packs for a throne, it's just going to be five because I want to do monocolored. Uh, and yeah, here we are. My son has this card. He started collecting Throne of Eldrain and then he gave up. But I, I didn't take the cards away from him because they're, they're his. So yeah, nice, nice pull. And Japanese print at that. Fantastic. Yeah, this this set is just, yeah, very good. And so whenever whenever a set comes along these days, um, I think I'm old enough and have been playing Magic for a decade, which is, I think, long enough to have a, see a bunch of cycles of how Magic plays out, to know that, hey, if the set is really good, just crack a ton of it. Don't, don't try to have, like, an even um, selection in your collection of all the sets, because I'm not the, the uh, Museum of Magic. So, for example, M19, uh, even though it was a pretty cool set, the whole value in M19 is in the Mythics. Everything. The rares are just worthless. Uh, even though I, they're playable, but they're just like, you're not, you're paying $4 uh, to play the Mythic, uh, mythic uh, Rare Lottery. And so I have very few M19 cards. I've entertained uh, getting an M19 box. I don't know. I don't see it happening. It's, it's just time has passed. It's it's over. I, I'd rather buy two boxes of the D&D set. Man, Japanese print. See, the foils are very flat and beautiful. They're not... Yeah. Yeah, they just feel... They feel right. I, I think Wizards needs to cut bait and stop printing in the U.S. The U.S. print just sucks. They just need to go all Japanese. I mean, these cards are just so well printed. Such high quality. I mean, they're all, they might as well be for a different game, really, compared to the, the U.S. print cards. And I can actually tell them apart. I can tell them apart. The, the way the ink adheres to the cardboard makes the cards look different. I can tell them apart. 
course, that's kind of my thing. I always do that, for example, for Force of Will, uh, telling the difference between Japanese and uh, and Taiwanese print. But here, I can I can tell the difference between um, Japanese print with the rare on top cards and the U.S. Uh, clumsier, lower quality print. I don't know what to call it. But yeah, the uh, dungeon mechanic, I was just playing this guy in Arena early this morning before work. Yeah. Nice. Such a nice find. I did not know. Nobody tells you in the listing, hey, these are Japanese printed English packs. I may even get a set booster box uh, for one of the sets, just for kicks. Not sure. Not sure. And this guy gets a lot of play. Definitely uh, worth building a constructed deck around. I mean, that's in Arena, it's one of the most popular decks. I thought about buying the commander decks that come with the standard sets, but I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure. I think I would. I would. I'm gonna have a lot more fun building my own uh, decks. Okay, there you have it. And then I think I still have two more packs. And then I don't know if I'll have time to. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Build a deck. Or two with the cards. Monocolored, always monocolored because they're I'm prepping them for the cube. Oh, second one of this guy. This guy's pretty good. There's some really good equipment in the D&D set. I actually took my uh, Nahiri deck that I used to play that became kind of bad uh, after Zen 3, Zendikar 3, Zen 3 as I like to call it. And now it's, eh, it's gotten better. There's a two drop, um, a two drop uh, one, uh, white creature that favors uh, equipment. Put a playset of that in the deck. When I crack the DND set, I'll point it out. Okay, adventure. It's like a junk rare. You win the game, one of those you win the game cards. Obama. All right, so that's it for these six packs. And uh, I would say the highlight, I play this card in my mono blue deck. Uh, this guy's good. This guy, definitely. Second one of that guy. Yeah, so I would say the highlights uh, from this selection, these six packs, are these three.